everybody. Mark Levin, our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. You know, I started this discussion yesterday based on the Washington Compost piece about the uh, McConnell and Prince Priebus and the Republican establishment plotting to take over the Republican convention, and it's gone viral. I also said something else yesterday. I said that the Republican establishment is responsible for these outsider candidates. And I've been thinking about this today, and I want to explore this a little bit further with you. I'm 58 years old. I've watched these campaign cycles for a long time, been involved in the political process at the grassroots level since I was 13 years old. I ran for office when I was 19 years old. I was involved in the Reagan campaigns in 76 and 80, and I'm going to tell you something. The Republican establishment is more than willing, in fact, prepared to lose this election. I told you several months ago, again, since repeated, that the Republican establishment would rather have Hillary Clinton as president than any of these outsider candidates. And I explained why, and we've talked about it many times, because if you're a constitutional conservative, you're a greater threat to the Republican establishment than if you're a left-wing Democrat. The Republican establishment is about cutting deals. The Republican establishment's about big government. Herbert Hoover was about big government. George W. Bush was about big government. George W. Bush is the Herbert Hoover to Barack Obama. There's no question. They have their surrogates all over, planted in various left-wing media outlets. They have an enormous in- influence in surrogates and pseudo-conservative outlets. I'm attacked a lot by, by these, these lightweight weasels who, who are very frustrated with me because I won't just have a full-throated attack of Donald Trump. They say, you know, many years ago you used to attack Donald Trump. Well, Donald Trump has changed in many ways, and he's changed his positions in many ways, much like Mitt Romney, pro-abortion, pro-life, if you will. But that's not even the point. They will not let this process play out. They don't trust the American people. They don't trust the Republicans, members of the Republican Party, who vote in most of these primaries. They just don't trust us to make our decision. Because it's not that they have contempt for Donald Trump, truthfully. It's not that they have contempt for Ted Cruz or or Ben Carson and so forth. They have contempt for us, and they've shown their contempt for us for years. They hate the Tea Party. They hate the conservative movement. They hated Ronald Reagan before Ronald Reagan was, was a great president, and they did everything they could to cripple his campaign. They organized against him. They raised an enormous amount of money against him. They leaked the same stories about him. A B actor, not particularly bright, shoots from the hip, and on and on and on. In fact, there was only one Republican senator in 1976 who did not endorse Gerald Ford. And that was Paul Laxalt, who endorsed Ronald Reagan. So I've been here before. I'm not saying any of these candidates are Ronald Reagan. That's beside the point. What I'm saying to you is, we had this great man. He'd been governor of California. He had a tremendous record in California. And they still tried to destroy him because he was an outsider. He was an outsider trying to fight his way in. He was an outsider trying to change the Republican establishment and the Republican Party. And they hated him. How dare he challenge them? And before him, they hated Barry Goldwater. And what I'm telling you is... These people are, in essence, foils for us. They hate us. They despise us. They try and manage us. They deceive us. As I speak today, Paul Ryan's working out another deal with Nancy Pelosi, a massive spending bill. This is a guy who's supposed to be a conservative. This is a guy who goes to the microphone the other day telling us what conservatism is and isn't. He worked at a conservative think tank. He's got his surrogates all over Washington and in the media telling us how wonderful he is. And look where we are. And I'm going to tell you something else, not to offend. This is not intended to offend. There is no conservative cable channel. There are left-wing cable channels, and there's a cable channel that's not left-wing, but there really is no conservative cable channel. There's no conservative network TV. I'm telling you the truth. There are Republican channels. There are Republican uh, uh, surrogates out in the, uh, for most of these columnists. They're not serious conservatives, and I'm not saying they have to agree with me on everything, not in the least. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. 
If they weren't trashing Donald Trump, would they not be trashing Ted Cruz? As a matter of fact, they're trashing Ted Cruz right now. Who were they trashing six weeks ago? Ben Carson they were trashing six weeks ago, am I right? Kasich isn't trashed like this. Lindsey Graham isn't trashed like this. Jeb Bush isn't attacked like this. Chris Christie's not attacked like this. Why is that? Why is that? I think the reasons are obvious. So the establishment ruling class dug in Republicans, they are more than happy to lose this election. If they can't nominate who they want, then fine. That's the way they think. They want to control the Republican apparatus. That's where the money is. They want to control the Republican National Committee. They want to be the people who have to meet with the lobbyists and all the rest of them and line their campaign coffers and later when they retire, line their own pockets. I have never, never heard senators and governors and others in the Republican Party talk about Cruz or Carson or Trump the way this current crop of Republican establishment does. I've never heard anything like it. Never. You see guys like Lindsey Graham going around. Lindsey Graham is not running for president, ladies and gentlemen. He just wants a national forum so he can trash the people who the Republican establishment don't want. He's a saboteur. He's at 2% in the polls. There's absolutely no reason. Let, let me tell you, there's no reason for him to run. No reason for him to run. Now, Trump is at 35, 37, at tops 40%. He's not at 50, 51, 60%, but they're worried. It doesn't matter. Cruz... Uh, he's either leading or close to leading in Iowa. He's got 16%, 20 25%. But look how they're all freaked out. They're freaked out because they can't get behind a candidate. Because Jeb Bush is an egomaniac, and that whole family's full of egomaniacs. Marco Rubio has no intention of moving out. Former solid conservative now seems to be shifting more and more. His billionaire donors, they're not conservatives for the most part. Christie, they're hoping Christie in New Hampshire... They just can't decide on who they want. So their forces are divided. But they know this much. They're prepared to let us lose. They're prepared to let us lose. And I'm going to tell you something. This Republican Party has absolutely nothing in common with working people. Nothing. Nothing. They don't even try to attract them. They're so paid and bought for by the U.S. Chamber of Crony Capitalism, by the corporatists. They don't even, I mean, I understand the Democrats. I despise them, but I understand them. Of course they're for illegal aliens. Of course they're for voting fraud. Of course they're for everybody coming into this country who will give them 70% of the vote. But why are the Republicans? Well, the Republicans, it's not really about that, is it? It's about what their paymasters want. What the corporatists want, what the Rupert Murdochs want, what the what the Tom uh, Don Donahue's who run the uh, Chamber of Commerce, what he wants, what the Silicon Valley wants, and yet the Silicon Valley is full of leftists. But you know the Republicans think they can win some of them over, of course. This current Republican Party has no reason to exist. It doesn't stand for anything. It doesn't advance anything, which is exactly why we need a new Republican Party with fresh faces, people who have strong will, people who are willing to take on the establishment, who are willing to take on the media. They're never going to win over the media. Who are willing to do something about an out-of-control bureaucracy, who truly believe in national sovereignty and, and, and uh, protecting this nation. And that's exactly what the Republican establishment fears the most.